Hello YouTube, today I'm going to show you how to make this necklace. One of my subscribers asked if I could make a matching necklace for these earrings. I have a video up for the tutorial of these earrings. And the first thing I, you know, I thought about it and um, I made this one with the button. And I try making it without the button just because the earring has no button. So I made this one without it. But I was okay with it. I wasn't very pleased with it. So I decided to do this tutorial with the button. And if you would like to do it without the button, just follow uh, the directions of the flower from the earring but there's a, a thing you gotta do if you want to do another row like this you gotta start each chain with a mock pico, pico sorry so I'm gonna show you how to do it and for this button pendant you're gonna need um, to put your beads and your uh, thread ahead of time and I just made a mess out of mine and you also gonna need a button so I'm gonna take my button off my thread and you're gonna need about 48 beads Yes, 48 beads. So, since I'm using a button, I will not be putting the bead and the flower and the little petals. But if you are not using a button, then you're going to have to add one, two, two, four, six, eight, ten more beads. So then you're going to have to have 48 plus. 10 more beads, which is 68, okay, if you're not using a button. I hope I didn't confuse you. <laughs> Feel free to come in and ask me if uh, if I confused you. So the first thing, I want to leave enough, enough thread for my necklace. So I'm just going to go and measure it and tap just, you know, rough rough you know measurements just like that and then I'm gonna leave about I'm just gonna leave 24 inches for the flower which I I think is gonna be plenty but I still don't like you know run out so let me thread my needle okay and like I said, you got to put uh, 48 beads if you're using the button and three big ones if you want. And we'll use the big ones at the end of our flower up here. I don't know if you can see it. So you need the button and the 48 small beads and three big beads, which will go at the uh, after the small beads. Just like this. First you first you put in the big ones and then you add the 48. Okay. We're gonna start with um, a ring of three double stitches. Pico. Three double stitches. And it's been a while since I used a button in my tatting, so let's see if I can remember how to do it. <laughs> okay, so we're going to put our thread inside the hole of this button. And you know what? I'm going to use a tool that I've been using 
for this. Let me find that. So I was making some uh, I was making some linears and what I did is see my linear I was making so the little uh, see-through I don't know what this is called I forgot but I cut a piece of it just like this and what I do is I use this to thread the big uh, beads. And somebody told me that they have actually metal uh, things like this that help you thread your, your beads into your, you know, into your thread. But um, I haven't made it to the store to actually look for them. But I want what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it around my thread. And then hold both ends and this was gonna make it easier and then just go inside the button just like this and then pull the thread through just like that so I'm gonna leave that tool right there for later because we're gonna be using it a lot so this is what we have so far. Now I'm going to grab that and I'm going to pull my thread from the ball so my needle gets closer to the button. Okay. Okay. Just like that. And we're going to do three double stitches. Pico. Three double stitches. Okay. So that's what we have so far. And I don't know why, but my my thread is not showing purple on your screen it looks kind of bluish but it is purple so <laughs> okay let's close our ring now going very careful because usually when you have a very long tail it starts getting really really tangled so just go slow and we're going to reverse our work okay so we're going to start with our first chain and and this necklace, I only put one bead, but I'm going to do three instead of just one. So we have it like right here. So we're going to work uh, with two double stitches. No, three double stitches. Three double stitches bead, three double stitches bead, three double stitches bead, three double stitches. But we're going to start with the mock pico. And I have a, a video on that. I will put the link if you don't know how to do a mock pico, okay? So we're going to start with the mock pico and then one double stitch, two, three, and then one bead. Three double stitches. Another bead. Three double stitches. A bead. 
and three more double stitches. Okay. I'm gonna close our, we're gonna finish our chain, going kinda slow, making sure our thread is not getting tangled. Good. Now we're gonna reverse our work. Good. And there's our mock pico right there that we're going to be using later. Okay. So we're going to make another ring of three double stitches. And we're going to join. to this pico three double stitches Oops. and we're gonna put it inside the button and for that we're gonna use this little thing Hold both. Go inside there with both. And pull that. And there's our loop. It's so much easier. <laughs> Okay, now we're going to put our needle in the loop and pull our thread with this finger right here so it gets closer to the button, just like that. Three double stitches. pico, three double stitches, close our ring, Now let's reverse our work. Okay, we're going to make another chain starting with a mock pico. So three double stitches. One bead. three double stitches another B sorry I keep pulling my camera back three double stitches one B three double stitches Okay, so there's our chain, putting our work right in front and finishing it up. Okay, reverse our work.
when you reverse your work, your thread from your needle, it's in front of your work. Okay. Now we're going to make another ring. Three double stitches. Sorry, I turned it too much. <laughs> I'm gonna join. Always join to join to your left. Three double stitches. Now we're gonna join in our button. Okay, in the same hole, we're working in the same hole of the button. We're gonna work three rings there in each hole for a total of six. Okay. There's our loop. Three double stitches. Now when you do that one, you make sure it goes all the way closer to your next stitch, okay? One, two, three, pico, three double stitches. One, two, three. Let's close our ring. There we go. Now reverse our work. Now we're going to do another chain starting with the mock pico. Three double stitches, one bead, three double stitches, bead, three double stitches. Three more double stitches. Okay, let's finish this chain. Oh, it's my kids. They're still on vacation. I'm doing this video while I'm on vacation. Reverse. Oh, I lost my thread. <laughs> and there we go. Okay. Okay. Okay, so let me just thread my needle real quick. I'm going to make another ring. Three double stitches. And if you want, you can have beads in between these 
rings like I did with this one but sometimes when I do the videos it's kind of hard to join with beads so you can see them right there so I didn't want to take too much time on that in that video so except to you so we're gonna join three double stitches and we're gonna actually go all the way to the other hole of our button only three per button or you can do four if you want but I'm only doing three okay so I'm gonna put my tool and go inside the hole of the button just like that and there's my loop I'm gonna put my needle through there just like that okay okay three double stitches one two three pico three double stitches We're closing this ring. Reversing our work. Okay. So that's what we have so far. Now we need, we're gonna start another chain. So we need a mock pico, three double stitches, one bead, three double stitches, bead, three double stitches B three more double stitches there we go putting my needle in front of my previous ring Okay, reverse your work. Okay, next ring, we need two more rings, three double stitches. Always join to your left. Join. Three double stitches. Okay. Join into our button. I don't think this tool that I got <laughs> will work for small beads because uh, the thread will be too, too thick to, to go through it. 
but you can try if you want to. <laughs> okay, so there's our loop out of the button and three more double stitches. One, three, pico, three double stitches. Okay. Okay. Now we're doing another to reverse your work and doing another chain starting with the mock mock pico three double stitches B three double stitches B three double stitches B three double stitches Okay. Okay. Reverse our work. Okay, now for our last ring, three double stitches, join. three double stitches join into the button really sorry it seems like in every video <laughs> when I uh, I'm done to the last join or joining or something it's just like it gets messed up <laughs> it never fails um, okay so there's our loop let me get my needle shorter. So pull it so it gets closer. There we go. Good. Three double stitches. One, two, three. But now we're gonna join to the la to the first ring that we did. Just kind of okay, move it. No, it's gonna be a little hard, but it's you can do it. Join okay, 
and three double stitches. So you have this. Okay. Now let's close our ring. There we go. Don't start getting tangle on me. Okay. Reverse your work. And we're going to do another chain. The last one of this row. Starting with the mock pico and doing three double stitches. One bead. Three double stitches. Another B, three double stitches. And one more B, and three double stitches. Okay. Reverse your work. And we're going to find our mock pico and we're going to join to that. Okay. So I see it right there. Right there. So we're going to join there. like that and you have a mock pico on every single chain that we did so right there you can see a loop lifting up right there okay so we're gonna do five double stitches B. I got a knot in my thread. There we go. Five double stitches. Bead five double stitches one more bead five double stitches. Okay, okay, we're going to reverse our work. Okay. Just trying to see if I turn the right way. Okay. Now we're going to join to our mock pico right there.
Okay. Now five double stitches. B. Five double stitches. B. Five double stitches. One more bead. Five double stitches. Okay. Reverse our work. Sorry. Join to the next pico. Not the next mock pico. Five double stitches. Five double stitches. Pico. Five double stitches. B. And five double stitches. Okay. And a reverse our work. Okay, and you're gonna join to your next mock pico. Okay, so continue like that and until you get to your last one and we're gonna do a split split chain there. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so we're almost done and I'm almost done with my my flower and I'm gonna join to the mock uh, pico right now and start the sp uh, split chain okay if I can get it in there <laughs> okay There we go. So we're going to start by doing five double stitches. And 
and then putting up our beat five double stitches okay and we are we're gonna finish our split chain by going through and we're gonna reverse it and finish it up with the knot make sure it goes all the way down to your stitches okay now I'm gonna unthread my needle and we're gonna do five double stitches if uh, if you don't know how to do a split chain I have a video out for that I will put that uh, video link on that description box okay so five double stitches And we're going to need a bead, an extra bead, to add to our split chain. So let me get one bead. Only one. And I'm going to add it. Okay, and five more double stitches. Okay, now we're gonna We're gonna put our needle in here. And actually I'm gonna uh, thread my needle now while it's inside that stitch right there. Okay, and I'm gonna make turn my needle so my stitches are facing out, just like the other ones are in my other in the other side. So I'm looking, f uh, I'm turning my needle or my stitches just like that, and. I'm going to pull a needle making sure those stitches are looking the right way just like that Okay, so then we have the split chain and we're going to make a little knot on the top just so we connect so we can connect both of them together just like that okay so now we're going to add our big beads okay so we need three of them remember we added three big of our beads and we we want to push our t 
tail thread through it too so because it also won't look good it will look like this the thread will be over it and we don't really want that so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna grab this oh and I found that I'm using this clear thing okay and I just cut a piece of it so I want to get my thread from my needle inside those beads so that's what I'm gonna do just gonna hold them and go in there and this thing works pretty good because it's kind of it's kind of hard but it's not that hard it's not like uh, you know it's bendable so it works pretty good one more to go and you'll see how it goes in there really good see I'm just pulling it out already and let me go to the other one I just went through two. Need one more. Okay. Let me get rid of it. And I hope I didn't make a mess. <laughs> Okay, so here's the loop that came out of that. I'm just gonna pull through. Just pulling my tail through there. Okay. And that's what we did. Don't worry about that when you harden your when you stiffen them up it will look better okay so that's what we have now we're gonna do we're gonna work with Josephine nuts okay and it's really easy to do a Josephine nut it kind of feels kind of funny at first just because you don't do it all the time and but once you get started you can just keep going and going you know but it's it's not hard at all I have a tutorial on how to do it too I'll put it on the description box so uh, we can either just put a knot on it on top of our beads or just you know keep going I'm just gonna keep going so uh, just keep doing Josephine knots. I usually do like 10 and then I turn it and then another 10 And then churn it but sometimes even your own work starts churning so I just let it go and churn it but like I said this is very easy to do it's not hard at all okay so you're gonna keep going until you get to the length that you want your necklace to be your this part of your necklace so just keep doing Josephine knots and when your needle gets full all you have to do is pull it through just like you're doing a um, just like you're doing a chain just pull it through let me pull my tail out of there see and then you just put your needle back on top of your stitches 
and then start all over again with the Josephine knots just like that okay so keep doing that until like you like I said until you get the desired length and I'll see you when you're when I'm done with mine okay so I finished with my um, Josephine uh, not <laughs> sorry <laughs> and I actually did about let's see 12 about 24 inches long so now I'm just gonna make a knot at the top just like that and I'm gonna join it to the bottom to the top actually sorry to the top of those three beads that we put on so I'm just gonna find a place to just go in there just go on top Just like that. Make a few knots. I just pulled it. Make I'm gonna make three knots just because I want it to be very secure. Two three good now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna weave in my ends just so I'm just gonna go in between the stitches of the Josephine knot just wiggle my needle through there as long as I can Just take your time on here. And I want to go a little bit higher, but I'm going to cut this thread over here from my other side and just and just keep doing that until you know you have about an inch that you weave in your thread about an inch. Okay, so this was the video. And maybe I'm going to have to go and make some purple earrings to match it. If you will, if you haven't done these earrings and you would like to make them, I will put the, um, the description on the, uh, the link to that, to the YouTube channel. <laughs> wow. I can't speak today. <laughs> the link to that, to the video on the description, uh, box. And this was it. If you like my video, please like or subscribe. I usually update a video once a month. And if you have any ideas or if I wasn't really clear about something that I said, uh, let me know. Sometimes it's kind of hard for me to do my chatting in front of the camera. And I'm a human, so I make mistakes. And also, um, thank you for all the new subscribers and all your nice comments. Happy New Year to everybody. And, um, and I think that's it. So, happy chatting.